today's topic we're going to talk about full spectrum converted cameras and filters versus cameras that are actually built for specific purposes. Uh, it can produce the cameras but other people have modified them specifically for infrared or maybe for star photography with hydrogen alpha filters or again may go full spectrum. So you have your normal everyday camera which can see the visual spectrum then you've got full spectrum camera which has had the CCD CMOS filters and Bayer filters and things removed so that someone can actually take the full spectrum which is really about 280 nanometers maybe 300 nanometers up to quite high maybe a thousand nanometers at the most then you've got infrared modified and you can choose what filter you want to put across the sensor I've got a 720 nanometer filter across my sensor and then you've got hydrogen alpha modifications and things like that all the modifications involve taking things away from the CCD because cameras by default are designed to only show you the normal visible spectrum and to filter out those things that we don't normally want to see that creates focus blur and some people believe it or not can see a little bit of UV so it gets rid of all those things that normal people can't see now why would you go for a full spectrum with a filter versus a mod camera okay so what I've got in front of me are three cameras all three have been modified I've got a 600 which has been modified to be full spectrum I've got a 550 which is modified to be hydrogen alpha for taking photographs of deep space uh, it picks up all the hydrogen alpha reddish sort of colors and then I've got the infrared 720 nanometer advantage of having the camera modified at the CMOS is I can pick out the 720 nanometer, I can look through the viewfinder, I can instantly take photos, the autofocus auto works, and I can basically wander around a park shooting in every direction I want to shoot. The advantage of the hydrogen alpha, I can fit that straight to my telescope, straight through a Barlow lens, I don't need to do any other mods to it, and away I go, I can shoot. The advantage of the full spectrum camera, I don't get restricted to infrared or hydrogen alpha or UV, I choose what filter to attach. With infrared, there's a whole bunch of them. There's uh, 590 nanometers, there's 600, there's 720, there's 900 nanometers, and all produce a slightly different color and shade. You might want to change them around. So the real advantage of having a body mod to the specific of what you want to do with it, infrared or UV or something like that, is autofocus works, you don't have to worry about what lens you attach, um, you just whack it on, take your photo, see through the viewfinder, um, all those sort of things, live view, that all works. When it comes around to doing it with a full spectrum camera, quite often you're trying to look through a filter that's attached to the end of your lens. Quite often you cannot see, quite often you cannot autofocus, and quite often you have to actually expose for a couple of seconds. So it's a bit more difficult. And obviously when you're doing something like that with a full spectrum camera, you got to lug a tripod around with you, so it's not point and shoot. They're the main differences. So let's just have a look here what we've got. This camera is hydrogen alpha. There's two ways to do it. Down in there, underneath the mirror, someone has put a hydrogen alpha filter and removed the UV IR cut filters. Other than that, it's a standard camera. So you can point and shoot and do all the normal things you would normally do, not a problem. Other thing you can do is have this modified to full spectrum and then from Astronomic and a few other companies there's a filter that can go in here and then you put your lens on. Fits right in the guts of the camera. I've got a few of those as well but they're not my preference. Hydrogen Alpha they work okay but other things not my preference. Next camera is infrared. It's my 720 nanometer infrared. Doesn't need to be a very fancy camera but I can take that to the park for the day, point and shoot, not a problem, take all the photos I want, autofocus, don't have to worry about sitting there for a few seconds and then checking my focus or anything like that, it's just beautiful, but only takes infrared, that's all it will take. And then, of course, the full spectrum, which of course all these filters back here, I can then add as I require. So what filters have I got here? I've got everything from UVR, various infrared, um, I've got all kinds of things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take them out for a bit of a photo shoot and show you what they each look like. You've seen many of my UV photos, so I'm not going to do UV today. 
Hydrogen alpha, probably not of big importance to you, it just brings out the reds. So you see the normal spectrum of colour, but just a bit pinkish reddish. Um, but these other filters, they can do some pretty cool things. So let's take them for a walk. Just before I wander outside, I thought I would put my infrared 720 nanometers straight onto my normal everyday Canon 5D. Uh, yes, all my cameras are Canon, just in case you're wondering. Um, and unlike previous cameras I've tried it on, where I just see pretty much black, I can actually see in video mode something appearing in the haze there. But as you can see, it's very red. It's not really infrared as such. It's near infrared. It's, it's the spectrum just above the visible, just as it heads into infrared. With the full spectrum, I'll get a completely much different contrast and, and a better view. I decided to do this before wandering outside because there's some very noisy birds outside and you might not be able to hear me on the audio above all their noise. Well, those uh, birds have not gotten any quieter. Um, so just before I do head out there, I thought I'd show you today what I'm actually going to be playing with. This first one, obviously they're all going to look black. This has a little bit of sun cream damage on it. Um, this is an x Night UVR filter. It filters out a little bit of the spectrum of the visual and shows a lot of IR and UV. I'm going to start today with quite a, a nice orangey view here, a nice red view. This is a 590 filter, often called the golden filter. You can do some tricks in Photoshop and things like that to make pictures look a little bit golden. From there, I'm going to go up through the 630. As you can see, 630 nanometers, the filter gets a little darker. I'm then going to go up to 650, and that's when they start to get really blood red, I guess. Um, camera's auto-focusing, so forgive any of the noises it's making. Right, from there, I'm going to go up to my favorite, which is this one here, which is a 720 nanometer. Very hard to focus through because it's getting to be almost black. Then you head into the realms of the really dark. We've got the 850 nanometers. And then my biggest would be the 900, which is just getting black. Not quite like an ND filter, but it's getting blank. Try and focus through that, it's a job. And that's where, of course, the full body mod comes in handy because you're looking straight through the normal filter, uh, sorry, through the normal lens and through the um, prism in the camera if you've got one. And uh, yeah, you can auto focus and do all those tricks and it all works. Anyway, I'm going to fit them one at a time. The 720 nanometer filter will look exactly the same image as the 720 on BOD camera. Um, it's just obviously that one I have to screw on, which is a real pain actually, especially when you start unscrewing them and your other filters, your CPLs and things come off. Um, but uh, as long as you're happy to do that, carry a tripod with you and filters, screw them on and off, uh, it gives you more choice. But again, if you go for the full body mod, don't need a tripod, don't need to carry extra uh, filters around with you and not screwing anything on and off, you're just attaching and removing lenses as you go.